I have a great idea for a pilot, guys. So what if religious... I mean, not just that one. I mean, come on, basically the same show. That doesn't count. I haven't seen that one. What? Shut up, I get it, I get it. It'll just be a sub-theme. What if Victorian cowboys... Um, okay, well... Die! Well, if you want animations not about cowboys in hell, subscribe to Allocations and hit the bell. Uh, who am I kidding? I'm gonna talk about Allocations in hell and cowboys as well. That was not an intentional rhyme, oh my god. Did you know, like, a dumb number of people who watch my videos aren't subbed? And if you are one of the newbies who's watching this for the first time, I suggest changing that and becoming a repeat customer. Like, cray cray, baby. It is so cray cray, baby. Anyways, I know tropes get overused, but I think we need to chill with the indie animation Hell and Cowboys. I'm still working on my mascot horror concept where cute things turn scary, my cynical superhero show, and my subversive high school self-interest search show. I worked on that one before high school. Damn, my life is cooked. Like, if I die alone, can I at least have a Pulitzer? Anyways, back to the actual topic of Ramshackle. Before this Burton-esque kind of show even premiered, I knew it was in production for a while. It was one of those shows that didn't have many views. It was really obscure. A couple thousand for just a teaser. It was like a studio thesis. It had a pretty appealing art style. Not the biggest fan of the colors, but a sharp yet unique liquid animation. Pretty fascinating. But bros, we got it. I have been glazing indie shows for almost a year. I need to spice things up. So starving children are going through the trash and average nice golden retriever boy says we shouldn't eat babies. To which the Tim Burton Sona emo boy with a sexy voice to give Kovac some competition as well as cigarette physics that pirouette across the air with great conviction disagree. What a loser! What a loser! I'm putting him up here still. Annoying mid kid who is overly impulsive and slightly repulsive also believes it would behoove us to eat the key shaped baby. The audience claps as they send all the reddit gold to not only fund the orphans and deny the fright of the night, and instead of fighting crime, they fight through forced rhymes. But this establishes the establishments of this dirty town, the ramshackle world building. It's quite a nasty place, elites on the prowl, crossing streets of which vermin and every man tug over the same resources. The human pride to see us as above nature inevitably brings the jungle's competition down on ourselves like a hammer in a seemingly joyous resort of advancement. Street rats and actual rats devolve into primal, thoughtless, starving creatures with no future in sight, only instinct as their guiding light to a tomorrow. And down in Ramshackle, without a tomorrow to walk to, you aren't walking towards the light, but as the infrastructure below your feet fails one last time, you fall into fire. Yeah, it's cool and all, but as a media analysis channel, can you describe this in Star Wars terms? Do I amuse you? Am I some what? sort of clown no, to I, you? I, I hate my job. Well, the animation is... It's pretty. But looking grosser as the baby they call Maggot wiggles and slushes like you, bro, what the... with the bruh. This show is also kind of funny, even if the jokes of the elites are kind of played out. So in order to get the scam plan going bing bling bam and not end up in a sham that makes the participants say, oh damn, they gotta throw a maggot into the honey boo-boo. To all the annoying people who keep screaming in hell divers ears about fascist satire and all the people who kill bugs are fascists, if this entertainment entertains you by screaming democracy means you fundamentally misunderstand media literacy, blah blah blah, here is something a little less subtle somehow. Yeah, I don't know how you managed to get less subtle than hell divers, but... You know, I don't think subtlety was the primary concern. Whether it's serious or joking, obnoxious, blunt woman will say they're from the streets and that then you can empathize with people. I get the commentary of the rich bad. So, I mean, I get it is kind of comedic, so 
the commentary doesn't need to be subtle, but it feels a little annoying to have it spelled out so bluntly in front of you. At least with something like Hell Divers, when it shows the commentary in a comedic way, it's showing one side who is obviously in the wrong, hyping themselves up as if they're in the good. So not only is it still funny and not taking you out of the experience and still immersing you in it without having to explain it to the audience, they also manage to make it feel like you're at least figuring something out. Like it's not that hard. And also, there is no way that Kitten Sneeze is not from the streets. I'm sorry, but look, the hair is as messy as mine. And we all know I'm on the streets since I took all day to make an application for an edit for a VTuber horse. Like, financially stable people don't make decisions like that. Maybe the Sneeze Lord has been making hell of a bank with her shorts, so she's with the elites now, who knows. But what follows is a well done fight scene, there we go. You're all... SCRAPS! Oh, you're not allowed to be here. Go back to your slums. Okay, I get the humor, but please, if another show doesn't figure out what show don't tell is, I'm gonna eat my own ass out of protest. I'm gonna rage against the machine, except the machine is how modern storytellers have to worry about modern audiences. It's still fun though, I'm just nitpicking. Um, it's not even, it is a significant issue, but it's not like it brings the score down at, overall. I just really do like Show Don't Tell, and I'm not a big fan when you have to explain your theming, okay? The sound effects are a little weird as well. Someone is getting bitch slapped with a fish cap pancake while simultaneously sounding like Legos from the video game, except set to whisper how did you creatures concoct such a concoction with this production? So anyways, after they're backed into a corner, the baby they named Maggot explodes into a white light and becomes a biblically accurate angel. One that is giving courage to Cowardly Dog, its big ugly mouth spots some bars about the seven deadly sins while also showcasing some really hot background characters for no reason, tells the main cast that they got no bitches and says God forbid they get any bitches and since it's an angel, that means they mean it. Says the maggot feels warm inside its organs. Loki might have misinterpreted that line. Says they're gonna be milked for kindness. Gives them some fucking beans and the average paycheck of the average American. The one they receive after getting the 4.1 bachelor's and insert good degree here. And the angel looks like a pretzel surrounded by honey mustard as it leaves. And speaking of finances, why is... Subway selling their footlong pretzels for the same amount as their footlong sandwiches. What the hell is happening to this country? I am such a hypocrite because, oh my god, I'm just shoving my politics in all video too. Damn. And then the angel kills everyone in the entire city. The Calar bean faces realize that the real friends were the beans they made along the way. So, in the end, we all got beamed because that's how it ended, and in the end, it didn't even matter. What just happened? I can't explain it in Star Wars terms. Okay, fine, just fucking explain it in Star Wars terms. Okay, so watch my eight-hour analysis video that definitely does not steal all of its points from Maller. Oh, my God. And if you say it does steal all its points, you'll have to watch the entire fucking video to prove it! Ah! Oh, okay. And uh, moving on. Yes, I, I did just group everything old and yellow as a cowboy short, even though it had nothing to do with cowboy. So, just FYI, people have been requesting me to talk about some other shows, and I ain't letting you all down that easily. Because this one kind of came out of nowhere, but kind of didn't. The thing I like the most about this one versus a lot of the other pilots is this one's unabashedly funny. It's not like it's telling a story and it just has some jokes that flow. It breaks the story to make really good jokes. And I know a lot of people aren't into that style, but I kind of do, you know? I like just being absolutely shocked by how insane stuff can get. And I'm getting harder to shock as I get older, as I get more cynical, even as I try not to get more cynical. But, you know, you know, I like it. I do like it. And this is mostly a comedy. 
the characters are endearing enough, but it does take away a little bit when it's like they're just constantly saying, yeah, we got to stick together. Rich people bad. Honey Boo Boo sucked. That's that's bad. I mean, that I could live without a bit. It's just so on the nose and heavy handed. Like, I like the themes. It's just just not subtle enough. And I'm not asking for subtle. I'm just not asking you to explain it five times. I, I, like, I, I got, got the, the concept. concept. So I'm going to give this a 8.135 repeating out of 10. Closer to an 8.5321.8 than a, than a 4 if it makes you feel any better, okay? Uh, if you like allocations, sub to animations. I'm, I'm never going to get that right, am I? Wowzers. And also, thank you to the new editor I got for this video. They will put their name on the screen right now. Uh, they can do whatever they want and to just credit themselves there. Uh, also, they're going to leave 30 seconds for me to put in some ending video links because those are also some pretty epic videos you should definitely click on. Bye, y'all.